Hello friends, this video on carbon and its compound part 19 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 18. Now we will study functional groups. If you have, uh, if you re remember, my saturated hydrocarbons are generally unreactive, right? But if you introduce another atom or group of atoms to it, it becomes very reactive. And these another atom is called functional group. I'll take you to the examples of these. So understand the concept is you have saturated hydrocarbons, they are unreactive. But if you add this group of atoms, the property changes drastically and becomes very reactive. And we have some group of uh, functional groups. The first is the halo group. And then I have alcohol group, then I have aldehyde groups, then I have ketone groups, then I have carboxylic groups, then I have alkene groups, then I have alkyne groups, then I have ether group, which will not study, so I have put in gray. We have ester groups also, we have amines group, but we will not study these because these are not in a syllable, but since they exist, so I just wrote the names, we will mostly focus on these uh, first five. Alkenes and alkynes is something we shall learn, so we will focus only on the first five, right? And please note that all these uh, uh, have same chemical property. If you took halo group, they have same properties. If you talk about alcohol group, they will have some properties. So all these groups have one particular chemical properties. So first we will take halo group. So any uh, halogen, for example, chlorine, bromine, iodine, they are halo group. They are functional halo group. They have the dash, that means they are ready to be bonded with some carbon atom, right? So they are generally put with a dash here. So they are all halo groups, fluorine, bromine, or iodine, right? And they always occur at the end. General formula is Rx, where R is any alkyl, for example, CH3Cl, C2H5Br, right? C3H6. If you see the alkyl, so it is alkane from alkane, you remove one hydrogen, right? So it is methane, no hydrogen, methyl, ethyl, propyl. So any alkyl and then one halogen, correct? So for example, is this one CH3Cl, C2H5Br, C3H7. This is 7 actually, it has to be 7. I. Correct. So, to preparation of halo group is to prepare what you can do is when one hydrogen atom is removed from alkane, it becomes halogen. So, you have uh, alkane, you have a hydrogen in this, you replace this guy with the halogen, it becomes halo alkane. For example, you have CH4. Correct. What you do is you take one chlorine atom, you take this here, you take out hydrogen out. So this becomes CH3 Cl. Correct? You see CH3 C is nothing but halo alkane. So, so you remove one hydrogen from alkanes, you get halo alkanes. That is how you prepare. For example, you have this methane, you replace hydrogen by chlorine, you get CH3 Cl. Correct? And please note they also form homologous series. For example, CH3 Cl, C2H5 Cl. C3H7Cl. If you remember, I have told that in the homologous series, they have the same functional group. So if you see, there's a homologous series with the same functional group and chlorine group. Correct? So they also form a homologous series. That means they have similar chemical properties. Right? And preparation of this is very simple. You replace one hydrogen with a chlorine from any alkanes. This has to be alkane. And you get halo alkane. Halo alkane. Correct. The next is, uh, I mean, we'll now study the IUPAC name of this uh, group. So, hello alkanes are named after parent parent alkane by a prefix. Please note, prefixed to show the presence of the halo group is chlorobromoido. These presence of these groups are uh, depicted by prefix. For example, you have this uh, CS3Cl, C2H5Br, C3. H7I. 
So this guy will be chloromethane. So if you see what I have done is the IUPAC name tells that you have this uh, uh, halo group, use the prefix and then use the number of carbon so one chloromethane. This guy is bromo because bromine is there. Two carbon ethane, bromo ethane. This guy is iodo, three carbon. Okay, iodopropane. That's how it is, right? Chloromethane, bromoethane, iodopropane. So first you use this prefix for the halogen groups and then you use this methane problem based on the number of carbons it has. Correct. The next group is the alcohol group. It also occurs at the end. It has OH and the general formula is ROH similar to the halo group where R is any alkyl group and OH is my alcohol itself. Right? Example is this guy CS3OH, C2H5OH, C3H7OH. So these are my alcohols. And they also form homologous series. If you see CS3OH, C2H5OH, C3H7OH, they all form a homologous series. Preparation is pretty simple. So when one hydrogen is replaced by a hydroxyl group, we get alcohol. Correct. And the naming of this, here you have to use a suffix. I'm talking about the IUPAC name to show the hydroxyl group. And for this, you use the word OL. For example, you have the CS3OH, right? So this will called methanol. Because methane is meth, methane all. This guy will be ethanol. This guy will be ethpro, propanol. And as I told you that uh, we also have common names also. So these are my IUPAC name. I also have common name. So before this IUPAC name came, uh, these these. Uh, groups were very much common so we used to call this guy CS3OH was called as methyl alcohol this guy ethanol used to be used to call as ethyl alcohol and propanol we used to call as propyl alcohol Please note there is no uh, rule to write common name because uh, it was all uh, there before IUPAC name came but since these were uh, earlier called as methyl alcohol still a lot of chemists call it as methyl alcohol also. These names were there uh, since Asian so these names still exist and there is no common name to write these things. Also for this uh, halo group also we had this common name so I will take that also. So look, this, this was my IUPAC name and I will take common name. So common name of chloromethane is uh, methyl chloride. This is also called methyl chloride. For my uh, bromoethane is uh, ethyl bromide. And for iodopropane was I think propyl iodide. These are the common names used earlier before the IOPAC name came and these names continue to be used and sometimes we use chloromethane, sometimes methyl chloride, both are same, right? The only thing is chloromethane is IOPAC name and methyl chloride is the common name for the same compound, correct? Now we'll take aldehyde groups. Aldehyde group also occurs at the end only and this is CHO form, if you see, a CHO where carbon, if you see, has one bond with hydrogen and one double bond with oxygen and one bond is free to be attached to any alkyl group. The common formula is RCHO where R is any alkyl or hydrogen. Please note here my R can be hydrogen also because I have carbon already here so I can take hydrogen also. 
Correct. So the example is HCHO where my R is hydrogen or CH3CHO, C2H5CHO. These are my common examples for this thing. Right? And here also they form a homologous series I told. So they are, if you see, these guys two differ by CH2, these two also differ by CH2. So they all have uh, common chemical properties and they form a homologous series. Correct? The name is, uh, the formula is like this, some R, CHO, R can be any um, alkyl group or hydrogen and CHO looks like this. We will do a IUPAC naming convention of this. So it's the aldehyde. So we use the suffix here after the parent alkane to show the present presence of this aldehyde group and we use the word al, A-L-L, -L, right? The first two letter of this aldehyde, right? A-L. We use this word A-L as suffix to tell the name. For example, let's do this name of SCHO, CH3CHO and C2H5CHO. So I am doing a IUPAC name. Right? So this guy is HCHO. How many carbon atom? One. So I'll use the word meth methane. And I'll use the word AL. Methanol. Please note M E T H A, -A N A L. If you make it O, it becomes methanol, that is alcohol. So it's AL is there, right? You talk about CS3, CHO, there are two carbon atoms. This is ethanol. E T H A N A L. Please do not get confused with ethanol and ethanol. There is A here and there it is O, right? It's ethanol. If I take C2H5 CHO, three carbon atoms, two plus one, three. So it becomes propanol. P R O P A N A. Correct. And for these also, before this came, we had this uh, common name also. Common name. So for methanol, methanol was called formaldehyde. As I told, right, there was no, there is no, uh, form, uh, there is no steps to find the common name. Just remember this. Methanol is also called formaldehyde, right? Ethanol, ethanol is also called propanaldehyde. P R O P I O N A L D E H Y D E. This is also called propanaldehyde, right? Sorry, propanol was called propanaldehyde. And ethanol is a, has a, a better name that is called acetaldehyde. Yeah. So propanol was called propanaldehyde. Ethanol is called acetaldehyde. So these are all common names uh, which was used, right? So you remember this. Generally, I have seen that for uh, car things containing one carbon, forma what is used? I'll show you the formic acid, and with uh, two carbons, they use the word called acid, acid, acetic acid is for example, uh, but there is no rule actually, you have to remember this common name for uh, methanol is formaldehyde, ethanol is acetaldehyde, propanol is propanaldehyde. So now also if you see there is a pain, right, you have to remember the names, but if you follow the IUPAC name, you don't have to remember the names, just by looking at the formula you can tell the IUPAC name, right, so that's the advantage and the beauty of the IUPAC name, you don't have to remember anything, just by looking at the formula you can tell the IUPAC name. Or by looking at the name of the I, I mean IUPAC name, you can tell the formula. So thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.